what's up y'all crystal here and while i am sitting in the car at the park with my husband and the children out playing and i got the little one ava right here um i wanted to share or just share some tea with y'all the tea is always the testimony with crystal ava where are you going she's trying to climb up everything y'all and this one is going to be really really quick and so my tea is always just my testimony of god, what god is doing in my life um whether it's externally or internally um healing me um just some things where you know god definitely gets the glory for what is going on um so one of the things that i wanted to share is a couple Ooh. of days or maybe no this was not a couple of days maybe last week earlier last week i was in my devotion time and oh my goodness ava <laughs> y'all she been a what girl uh, come on come on come on hold on y'all she just she she's a little climber Ooh. say hi say hello she gonna be one next month, y'all. The time went. This our Georgia baby. Because as soon as we got moved here to Georgia last year in February, I found out I was pregnant with her the day before Mother's Day last year. So this is our Georgia baby. <laughs> our gorgeous baby. But anyway, so I wanted to share something um from my devotion time and i hope this is a blessing to you just in general in your life um but this is mostly for the women who are married aspiring wives but if you're married and you've been married for a long time and you are struggling with love like just love in general um something that the holy spirit shared with me and was just like allow me to love you back to life like the lord was just telling me allow me crystal crystal allow me to love you back to life and y'all i boohoo cried i was like oh my god because that was like a smack in the face and it was just out of nowhere as i was writing and this is why i'm so thankful for my relationship with god um i'm just so thankful that i can talk to him <laughs> And I'm just, my relationship with him is building. And um, he was just like, let me love you back to life. And man, y'all, when I told y'all, like, I felt that physically in my heart, like, in my soul. Like, my soul felt that. And I was like, oh, my God, you love me so much, Lord. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. In my marriage, I have um struggle with the word like love and i know one time before and this was maybe a few months back maybe earlier part of this year where um during prophetic planning for your day just going before god about our businesses and our daily life and stuff like that i get on this room in clubhouse and you know something similar was said to me after asking the holy spirit a question and i do encourage y'all to go to god and ask him questions like you would your friends or you know because god has all the answers and you need a relationship with him especially as a wife because marriage is something that symbolizes like our relationship with god like marriage symbolizes that and so um even back then there was something around that was said around the lines of like um how love was established for me in my life and what love what i have seen as love for a long time so you can imagine like i have carried that into my marriage and so that subconscious perspective of love is it reflects in my marriage and what i think of myself and my life and with my husband and i just got this faulty view of like what love is and so <clears throat> when when the holy spirit was like let me love you back to life i was like oh my god man i was like there is no love like the father's love okay and so based off of the scripture um in first corinthians i believe it's first corinthians 13 
starting at verse four where it says love is patient love is kind love never fails but i do encourage you to read like the whole chapter of um uh first corinthians chapter 13 i think it's our first or second y'all don't quote me actually let me find it real quick let me find it real quick because i want to read it for y'all ava ava i'm gonna take you for a walk after i record this okay okay so here here's something that's perfect because here's a scripture the the verse of the day in the bible app and it says above all things have intense and unfailing love for one another for love covers a multitude of sins forgives and disregards the offenses of others and that's the amplified that's ampc version first peter chapter four verse eight okay so let's just kick it out that way and then let's go to first corinthians since let's see is this first flawless adulteries nope uh actually nope i'm not even in let me go here first corinthians chapter 13 yep first corinthians chapter 13 um start from verse one if you do go back to this but actually let me start here so if i speak in the tongue in the tongues of men and and even of angels but have have not love the reasoning intentional spiritual devotion such as is inspired by god's love for and in us i am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal and if i have prophetic powers and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge and if i have faith so that i can remove mountains but have not love God's love in me. I am nothing, a useless nobody. Let me skip to verse four. Love endures. Actually, let me just read it in the King James Version. Y'all stick with me, stick with me, stick with me. Um, hmm. There you go. So, King James Version says, charity suffereth long. No, let me, I want the version. Of, okay, here it is. This is the NLT version. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It does not, it, it is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, ne love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. So that's verse 4 through 7. Um, that's the NLT version, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Okay, so that is, like, if you think about God loving you back to life, like, pretty much the scriptures that I just read from 1 Peter and 1 Corinthians, it's pretty much saying, like, we are nothing if we don't love, right? And we have to know when we are loving from our own hurts and pain and anger and all of that stuff. Because if we love from that perspective, we're not love, we're not gonna love how God wants us to love. And the thing is, in marriage, like <sighs> the enemy wants to use our past and our hurt our pain whatever like we go through with our husbands guilt shame anger all of this stuff to uh make our perspective of love faulty and then use it against us to use against our spouses right so for me what i realized is that i had to go all the way back to what love was for me from a child and like that would obviously start with my mother and my father. So another realization that came out of that is the fact that like I had been the love that my father showed me is it conditioned my mind to 
look at my relationship with my husband in the same way that I saw my relationship with my father. And so not saying that my father didn't love me, but the way that he loved me was very conditional. So what I've realized recently is that I have been loving my husband with conditions, not even realizing it, but I have been loving him with conditions and love is unconditional. Like God loves us unconditional. Like if the, if the scripture in first Peter says love covers a multitude of sins, then listen, like you're supposed to forgive and if you love someone, you will see them as God sees them. It's not easy. But as you grow and allow, and allow God to develop you and your character and recover you and your identity from all of this faulty thinking and these things that have filled you up throughout your life, that it was not of God. It was your the identity you took on from relationships with people. As God empties all of that out and he fills you back up and he loves you back to life, you're going to see that God's love is unconditional. It's patient. It's kind. It never fails. And I want you to think about your life and what you've done and things that you've said and just pain that you've caused and trauma and all of this stuff, things that you know you didn't deserve to be loved, but yet God loved you unconditionally. God looked past all of my sins. I mean, if I had, let me, let me put this into perspective of my marriage. There are some things that I have said to my husband. I have done to him, have secretly manipulated him in my mind and heart from a place of love that was like conditional, conditional love. And so because of all of my stuff and my hurt, my pain and all of this things that I had taken on through a faulty perspective of love, I carry that into the relationship with my husband. And I always say like, I married my husband from a broken place. Like my heart was broken. Okay. Just from things that I had gone through. Ava. Give me this. Ew. Just from a, things that I had gone through. And I caused my husband a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. And I didn't want to see that. Because I just, you know, just wanted things my way. Trying to, re you know, not be abandoned and not be rejected and all of this stuff. So anyway... God was just like, let me love you back to life, please, before you cause some more damage to yourself, to your marriage, to and whatever else I'm trying to do in your life. Because obviously, if you got a faulty perspective of love, you're going to self-sabotage because you can't love like you're not going to see you the way that I see you. If you see love, if you don't see love in the way that I see love, like that's what God was saying to me. Like, you don't know what love means to me, like what? what kind of love I give, if you don't understand that, you're not going to be able to give that. And so as a wife, I'm thankful because man, y'all, when I say like, I've been in prayer and just like, Lord, it's still not easy. But when I've been in prayer and just like, Lord, forgive me for, you know, what I've said to my husband, words that I've exchanged with my husband. Like, y'all, I was even to a point where, like, I called my husband a narcissist. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, just, man, like, just in my own pain, my own perspective of what that faulty perspective of love, that broken foundation of love. I called my husband names, um, just speaking words over him that was not of God, like just saying things to him that was hurtful and bitter. And I came to a point where, and if you guys go back and watch our video, we recorded a video for our 11 year anniversary and it's just real. It's real, it's raw, it's uncut. And hopefully we get to do more. But one thing that I said to him, I was like, I'm just at a place where it's like, how do I come back from all of the things that I have said and done to you as a person because of my own 
heart issues? How do I come back from that? And that's that's pretty much where I am. And I at first I know I have to ask God for forgiveness for doing that and not seeing my husband as he sees him, but also going to my husband and asking him for forgiveness. It's like, man, I know I have hurt my husband. How much damage have I caused because of this conditional love, you know? And I'm not saying like you sit back. Well, I'm not saying that you sit back and you just accept whatever, uh, you know, a man gives you or any relationship that you're in, you just take whatever. But you have to love yourself enough to know that, okay, I love you, but I'm not going to stay here in this, you know, or I love you, but there's better for me, you know, like I'm not going to sit here and keep accepting this because now I know what love really is and this is not it, you know, like be in a bed like as you grow and you become you heal from things all these broken wounds and being an orphan in this world feeling like you're an orphan <laughs> and all of this stuff like you come to a place where it's like man there is better for me this is not what god wants for me you're not going to treat me this way you're not going to say this and stuff like that as you grow you'll be able to become aware of those things and so even just in that there there's a lot of reflection from like when my husband and i from the time we met, which was ninth grade, you know, even up until the time we got married, which was um, 2000, uh, what year did we get married? We got married the year our son was born. So one, 11, 12, we got married 2012, October, 2012. So we've been together from ninth grade. We got married in 2012 and here we are in 2022 just celebrated a year 11 and just reflecting back on things it's like i i like immediately went back to places like circumstances and situations in my life where it's like man that wasn't love and that wasn't love and that wasn't love but because i was broken and i was chasing after love like looking for fulfillment and validation and not wanting to be rejected not wanting to be you know i wanted to be accepted and approved of it was like that was the type of love that i was living from so i realized how many things i accepted out of a broken heart a broken spirit like and if it's one thing that god wants more than anything he wants you to come to him with a broken heart and there's a scripture in the bible but listen psalms 51 <clears throat> As I close this out, Psalms 51 has really been one of those scriptures that I need. I've, I started to read and I need to meditate more on because that was a cry to God to um, pretty much like, Lord, don't reject me. Um, let me let me go read it. Psalms 51 NLT. Um, this is definitely one of the scriptures that I've been reading as I allow God to recover me, recover my identity, and also to restore me to be the wife that I need to be for my husband. Cause all he knows me to be is a broken woman, like a broken, hurt, angry, bitter woman. That's all he knows me as. And that's all he's ever heard out of my mouth was things from my broken place, a broken foundation, things that I have just emotional. Most of my stuff was like emotional trauma, which turned into mental stuff and just came out of my spewing out of my mouth. Like, <laughs> I just didn't know how to like, yeah. And y'all know therapy was taboo for black folks. So stuff just came spewing out of my mouth. So here we are. 20 years later and 11 years of our life for sure all my husband has known is a broken well lately he's been getting a better me you know like because <laughs> god is like pump your brakes you know he really been on me like pump your brakes don't say this don't say that apologize for this dude like just shush okay you've done enough with your mouth to your husband in your marriage that's pretty much what he's been saying to me so um 
All my husband knows of me is this woman that was broken and hurt and didn't know God's love, didn't know what love is. And all I could see was the negative that has happened in my life, the way people have hurt me and left me and abandoned me and stuff like that. Until it got to the point where I feel like I was like chasing after people to be accepted, but also like putting myself in a position where it's like I'm gonna people please so I can be loved like it, it didn't matter what relationship and now I'm okay with the fact that I will be lonely because I don't want no relationship if that's where my mindset is and that's where my heart is I Lord isolate me I don't want it until you know and that I'm ready to show up in relationships from a healed place and even in my marriage, and in a marriage, that's one of the toughest places that you can actually do that in. Because now you have to, like, not prove yourself, but you have to be in deep prayer. Like, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. The damage that I've caused to my husband when I didn't see it. Lord, put Lord, I ask you to allow him to forgive me because I know I've hurt him and I've caused a lot of damage and, and, and pain and hurt to him from the woman that he married and he loves you know like i'm i have been constantly like just pushing my husband away like just leave me alone why don't you leave and this and that just bringing up all kind of stuff from our past and everything like that and stuff like that and i'm that's a person that's broken and, and just in a horrible place so anyway um psalms 51 this is one of those uh scriptures where you chapters where you can read as you allow God to love you back to life as a wife. And you may feel like, oh, no, I'm good and stuff like that. But I really want you to, I dare you to go before God and ask him, Lord, like, Lord, have I been loving right? Like, have I been loving the right way? Have I been loving unconditionally? Um, where am I broken at? Where are places that I need to heal from? What has happened in my life that has opened up a door to unforgiveness because we're definitely supposed to forgive too so obviously i hadn't forgiven my husband for a lot of the things that for a lot of the things that we had gone through in our past and um just hadn't forgiven other people for things that i had that i had gone through in relation and my husband was getting all of it from childhood bestie relationships he was the one getting all of it so read Psalm 51, the emphasis on um, purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Y'all, Ava. Okay, here. Hmm. Um, let me rejoice. Oh, she done went scrolled up a little bit. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal, a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels. <laughs> Have you been a rebel in your in your marriage and they will return to you? Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. Um, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. Look with favor on Zion and help her rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So that was to verse... 18 but here's another highlighted verse you do not desire a sacrifice or i would offer one you do not want a burnt offering the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit you will not reject a broken and repentant heart oh god Ooh. okay so that is where i am like god wants a broken spirit so if you're a wife and go before god and ask him is my spirit broken and, and it says right here, you will not reject a broken and repentant heart. 
So especially if in your heart, you know you want to repent and you just want forgiveness for what you have done in your marriage. It starts with forgiveness like from God and forgiving the people that have hurt you and then forgiving yourself for like allowing it. Like we have to forgive ourselves too. So listen, you are not your husband's God. You are not your husband's God. You can't control him in an unloving way. You are to influence your husband for good. Like, you're supposed to be that added dime piece to him, okay? Not causing him hurt and he don't want to be home and he feels the... the ah. The everything in the atmosphere of your home, like y'all, God is working on me, okay? So just I'm letting God love me back to life. So allow God to love you back to life. I'll definitely share more on this. Um, and sorry if I was all over the place being in the car trying to get this done and with this little one here who's observing. Um, but I'll definitely be sharing more. So that's my tea. Follow me on TikTok at Crystal Clayton underscore. No, Crystal underscore Clayton. I'm not on Instagram right now, but you can go follow me there. Crystal Clayton underscore. Subscribe to the channel, please. Uh, more wife life content coming. More healing for wives coming. And y'all god is so good man he wants to love me back to life and he wants to love you back to life as a wife um so don't think that you need to divorce your wife your husband because that's not the case because if you're broken and you think it's your husband's fault that's not a reason to divorce in a sense if you know you need to heal like 100 percent, allow god to heal you first <laughs> Before you just say, I want a divorce. Because if that's your way of running from yourself and the stuff you need to surrender to God, guess what? You divorce, you're going to carry it right on into the next and the next and the next or whatever. It's going to show up until it's completely gone. Okay. So that's my tea. And I will see y'all. Say bye, Ava. Uh oh. Say bye bye. What you eating? Mm-hmm. <laughs>